Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back yet again. Take two. Yes, it is take two. Um, I just like totally lost my voice through that this first take because uh, we want to get some big, big points through that they don't want coming through. Well, it's very important that they, you know, because we have some things that we want to show and usually they make it difficult for us in one way, shape or form. Like usually the computers go down, you know, but this instance, Mike just totally lost his voice, completely lost his voice. So it makes us want to get it out even more. Yes. And what we want to share is like, first, like, and you know, we've had suggestions because we've, we've done things many different ways. I mean, we've tried smaller videos and being targeted specifically towards different things, but you know, that works for some, some people better uh, than others, but it doesn't necessarily suit our purpose. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we don't necessarily always cover every little event because we have a purpose and our purpose is to inform people, educate people as to the real system that's here on the planet and get people out of being controlled by one or another manners that they use one of the methods or another, as we talked about you know the control grid is monetarily it's geopolitically it's keeping us divided and fighting amongst each other and it's also through our belief systems as well so as long as somebody is controlled in some way they're still in the matrix and so you know we're trying to break down this matrix that's the whole purpose for cindy and i to be, even be here in these lives in the first place as we've spent many lives basically trying to help the planet out and the beings on the planet out to escape from this dark controller matrix so our purpose is not to <clears throat> have the biggest video channel it's not to get more views though we want to wake up more people it it's all about waking up people and it's all about getting people to shift their perspective and to act as a cohesive unit and to help overthrow the darkness that's upon the planet so that we can get ready and bring in that new era that's not going to be what we have here now, which is eternal conflict, nonstop wars, uh, you know, a system based on greed and control, jealousy, envy, strife. I mean, it goes on and on and on. And the deception that is always going and taking place the La Palma update, strongest 5.0 quake hits the island. That's, that's a getting up there. The main cone collapsing again. Amazing lava flow videos, and there's plenty to see here. La Palma is not slowing down. And, you know, as it becomes apparent, we've had several eruptions in, like, the last hundred years. Uh, but we're heading to an area where this is definitely... Uh, unusual why is it unusual well some people think it's because it's man-made as we look at this grid I know we see the grid <clears throat> and you could you know you could automatically think well aha this is evidence that it's definitely man-made and you hold that train of thought but that might not necessarily be true so <clears throat> one technique that the controllers will use is if they could go ahead and debunk one aspect of something They'll just throw it, you know, they'll get you to throw the whole idea away. So when we look at this grid pattern, and this is uh, CSEM, which gives you quakes worldwide in 48-hour period. USGS gives you it in a 24-hour period. USGS doesn't even cover all the globe. Uh, so, like, when you go look at what's happening in La Palma over in USGS or even just in Europe in general, they don't necessarily show you all the quakes. They seem to pick and choose. <clears throat> if you go any day and look at Mexico and quakes, you'll see a few maybe the USGS shows. You go over here and you'll recognize there were dozens, dozens. So again, we know the uh, USGS is very, very much lacking. But the big question here is why this grid pattern? Why? Well, we have this pattern where everything seems to be lined up in perfect rows. Well, some people have taken this to be evidence that this is technology. 
Here we see Nina Wilson, uh, who is a former computer engineer, healthcare provider, currently trying to make sense of the crazy world with some stats and logical analysis. She says basically that what they're doing is that they're knocking off a couple of the decimal points and the locations. So this is generalizing the locations. So if you look to the left, this is where they actually happen. And then when they knock off the decimal points, it puts them into a grid pattern, if you understand what we mean by that. So they're not as specific as if one happened right here in between. Maybe it's, you know, one tenth closer to this one. So they just basically put it at this location. And if you go down here farther, I'll give you guys the links. This is a video where the whole uh, gentleman explains all this in greater detail in about seven and a half minutes. Uh, so you might say, and, and look at her wording that she says, there's a mad conspiracy theory. Uh, yeah, you know, cell phones may not be good for you. No, that's just a mad conspiracy theory. Mm -hmm. You know, hey, you know, your, your non-stick cookware has a scratch in it. You should throw that pan out. Ah, that's just a mad conspiracy theory. Yeah, it won't make you that sick. You know, fluoride's in the water just for your teeth. Yeah, mm -hmm, sure. Yeah, we could go on and on. All these mad conspiracy theories that uh, eventually turn out to be true. And again, as we've said, I could think of a ton of them that have been proven to be true now that were regarded as mad conspiracy theories. Can't think of a ton of them that have been disproven. You know, how about how about weather control? How about C H E M trails instead of C O N? It's all been declassified now, so we know it's all a reality, yet we were told you're crazy. It's just a mad conspiracy theory. Uh no, not necessarily the case. So if this is the case, and basically they're taking these actual locations and truncating them by removing some of the decimal points and you're getting that grid pattern, they want you to think, okay, well, then that means that it's, it's not manufactured. But that's not necessarily the case. It, it may be the case that they're just localizing these by taking off those decimal points, but still the technology's out there. In 1898, Tesla fired fired up his earthquake machine and almost brought down a uh, you know skyscraper in New York. That was 1898. You know, 123 years later, oh, the technology is way more advanced. But the technology existed on the planet to create earthquakes way back then and to do way more than that. As, you know, the planet itself, the technology that the beings that control the planet utilize is way above anything that most people can comprehend because you know it came here from off planet and also from beings that are not even of this density mm -hmm. so yeah you know it in and it's a fascinating thing to to go ahead and you know read into this um event in tesla and his earthquake machine and then when we see hot areas like Taiwan, which we know at some point China is coming over the straits, or they're coming through tunnels and going to pop up, and probably both. Uh, it's just a matter of when they move on Taiwan. So we see a 6.5 quake. Uh, thankfully, it hit 41 miles deep. Did not cause major damage, but it did shake things for sure. Um, I always think, too, you know, this could be, again, technology going on, but it is a seismically active area. And we see over in Lake Tahoe, 100-mile-an-hour winds are coming, perhaps tonight, along with three feet of snow, and you could have some debris whipping around. Get ready out west, because winter is coming. I tell you, I, I'm enjoying being in this, this area, because it still feels like summer here. It's really nice still. So we had a ship uh, that was on the U.S.-Canadian border, cargo, when those container ships, that, that you know, of which there's countless uh, amounts of them, in this all-too-perfect storm that's going on with everything from the plan, uh, I mean, uh, you know what, the PAN-demic. <laughs> Oops, a little, little Freudian slip yeah, there. Yeah, be careful there. <laughs> a little Freudian slip there. 
you know, uh, the plague upon the land. Yep. That's, that's a better way of putting it. That happened to come, you know, two months after there was a major event, mm -hmm. numbered 201, that was, you know, just basically observing what's, what would happen if there was a plague upon the land. And then, you know, this happened. And then now, you know, we've had the earth changes just pounding the crop situation, uh, countless, countless livestock lost, um, farmers out of work, out of business, unable to farm. You know, it's just everything piling up, the whole supply chain absolutely crumbling. Yeah, you know, the, the problem is the controllers believe that most people on this planet have an extremely low IQ and are, are unable to really see into things. And that they're banking on that. Well, yeah, you know, they uh, put us in situations where we take our children to schools that teach us how to look for things external um, outside of ourselves. So we're trained for from a very young age to listen to what these controllers tell us to do, and we're guided by them. So naturally, when something happens, we're going to look to them to see, okay, well, what do we do? Because you've always told us before, they don't want people to learn to go within. Mm -mm. No, not at all. You, you have to believe in official version. That's why they control us through the financial situation, geopolitically, keeping us divided into these countries and divided into smaller sub subgrouping within the countries, different factions. Uh, and then they control us through our belief systems. You know, there, there's only one God and its name is this, mm -hmm. you know, and, and these are all methods of control. As long as we are buying any one of those pieces, we're still in the matrix. We might think we're awake. Like I hear people, hey, I saw a couple comments, um, not necessarily on our own here, but our own channel here, but saying basically well you know number 46 is actually being controlled by number 44 if you know what i mean as far as we look at the numbers of the presidents right and to me that's a sign that somebody still doesn't get it because every single one of the figureheads you see is just that they're figureheads they're not making any real decisions they're never allowed to make any big substantive decisions these are the ugly actors as we said the good looking actors go to hollywood the uglier ones well they go to dc uh and and other places around the globe as well we could add the vatican to that we could add parliament to that and so this container ship that lost dozens of containers in heavy seas west of the u.s canadian border on friday reportedly caught fire on saturday and you know the the whole container problem is just huge and what's in some of those containers and you know many people were envisioning that perhaps there was um personnel in these some of these containers or perhaps you know maybe there's tools for personnel to be utilizing when the go sign is given and the personnel are already here they've been you know, coming in, 1.7 million people crossing the border illegally just this year. And when you when you time this out, and let's say if we go back to, gosh, I'd have to count backwards. I'm going to have to use my fingers, guys. Okay, see, we got 46 now, 45, 44, 43, 42. If we go back to the admin of 42, of which there were some really, really interesting interactions with that fine diningware country, what if they started to come in even back then, even back in, in the late 90s, if, if they were coming in? Because we have gotten that there are these sleepy units that have been in the country for literally more than a generation waiting for the go time. And the go time is, is, is basically, uh, well, it's just, they're at the highest state of alertness right now let's say mm -hmm. and they're they're getting ready and you know they they're very good about sticking to their long-term plans prices of edible oils have been rising palm oil the world's most consumed vegetable oil surged to a new record high spreading concerns about persistent global food inflation 
Wow. Malaysia's palm oil futures soared more than 40% this year. Soybean oil is up more than 50%. And prices of canola oil are also at a record. Be, be aware of the oils that you consume, too, because some are not so healthy. Uh, we don't consume canola oil. Mm -hmm. Uh, we only really take in coconut oil and organic olive oil, and that's pretty much it. Um, avocado oil would be another good option. Um, we'll use sesame oil uh, for some of our, you know, Asian-inspired cuisine as well. Um, but but be aware of that. And when I see people just grabbing plain old vegetable oil, it just like. It's one of those things that kills me because, you know, again, we need to wake people up to the fact of what's healthy and what's not. As we shared, we had a lady right behind us in the grocery store. She was stocking up and she had about 10 cases of soda that she was uh, buying. And again, you know, that's going to lower your immune system. Always think in terms of, is this going to boost my strength, my immune system, my health, or is this going to take away from it? Because we are being attacked every single day by energies and frequencies that's entire purpose is lowering us in every way. Absolutely. Very important they do that for their own agenda. 61% of Americans paid no federal income taxes in 2020. So that means 39% of Americans paid all federal income taxes. I wonder, I wonder what the situation is going to be this year, honestly, and, and the year after. How about when, because I do think it's inevitable that the country is going to split up. Inevitable. You could see it. It's two trains on a collision course. Um, so, yeah, I think there'll be a lot of people that just decide they're not going to. They might feel, well, hey, I'm residing in the Republic of Texas, uh, I'm not going to go send anything to Washington uh, and others as well in different states. So interesting. And then over here we see India deploys advanced anti-aircraft guns, high altitude border standoff with China. This is still ongoing and they tried to have peace talks, which didn't really go anywhere. And we know, you know, the fine dining ware country is on the move. They know that they've been given the go ahead uh, to become the dominant power and, and, again, aligned with Russia and many other countries as well. Are you ready for the big cosmic impact? Tunguska-like event known as the Hopewell Airburst event devastated the Ohio River Valley in late Roman times. This is interesting, isn't it? And the Hopewell culture is an interesting one uh, to study. You know, as many might be aware of, there's all these strange mounds all through uh, the Mississippi River area uh, over towards Ohio. And I've been there personally uh, hiking in some of these areas by these mounds. And I felt uh, energies that I know are related to uh, the giants and related to other cultures um, of which we don't have a clear understanding. So we see that this was, you know, they're saying it was a meteorite that went and blast again in airburst. Remember, we were just talking about Sodom and Gomorrah, um, Tel, Tel Al-Hamam, I believe the name of the site is, where they think it was, you know, one of the two cities that's referenced in the B-I-B-L-E. And they say, you know, there was this airburst, something exploded just over the air which wiped out everybody, caused amazing temperatures, heat, you know, almost like a NUKE event. And here we go over the Ohio River Valley, another uh, event similar like that. Comet-shaped earthwork was constructed near the Urburst epicenter. 29 radiocarbon ages demonstrated the event occurred between 252 and 383 CE, a time when 69 near-Earth comets were documented. The Hopewell people survived the catastrophic event, but it did likely contribute to their cultural decline. And then, you know, the rest is history. And, of course, then we talk about the Younger Dryas event and, and the destruction that happened with these airburst events. As there's been many of them, 65 million years ago. And Younger Dryas, they say about 12,800 years ago. 
And if we look at the precession of the equinoxes, you know, that's about the opposition point of where we are now, you know, like the halfway point across. And what we've gotten in channeling is that, you know, this, this was a controller situation. This was the controllers. This was not natural. A lot of things that we take to be uh, comets and even asteroids are not necessarily exactly what they look to be. And also even some things that perhaps are can still be nudged. Mm -hmm. Oh, most definitely. These are things that, have, you know, cycles and cycles, this has gone on and on and on for so long. And they want us to continue to think these are just natural events. And, you know, moving forward, we have to start to question everything because we know the technologies. We can we can see what some of these technologies can do, and it's quite amazing. So the recent discovery of two Holocene cosmic impacts in Argentina, about 6,000 years before present, and 3,000 years before present, one in Jordan, 3,700 years before present, suggests these natural catastrophes are far more common than previously suspected. Between 1800 and 1431 years ago, uh, 220 and 589 CE, Chinese astronomers documented 69 comets, including Halley's, which came within 0 0.09 AU. AU, right? So, yeah, that's an astronomical unit. So basically, like one-tenth of the distance to the sun, which we're still talking, you know, millions and millions of miles. Um, it sounds really, really close. And, you know, again, uh, there, there can be a lot of close calls, but, you know, again, there is a lot of technology out there and, and we have to realize that. And, uh, you know, many communities, many civilizations have, have fallen because of these events. And again, when we look to the Bible, they say it was an act of a God, right? A God. A God. Yes. Not the act of source. And see, that's the thing again, because People just don't understand that, that there is one source from which everything emanates, uh, but it's not a man on a cloud, and, and it's not, e and not a being in a UFO either. <clears throat> and here we see ancient rainforest-dwelling humans ate a wide range of foods to survive. Some of the oldest evidence for modern humans living in rainforests has been found in a cave in Southeast Asia. Researchers analyzed fossilized teeth discovered in Laos, revealing that they ate fruits and also meat, part of an omnivorous diet. This is going back to about 60,000 years ago. All the species that we didn't know existed when I was growing up, that we do know uh, have existed, all these different humanoid species, Neanderthals, Denisovans, Cro-Magnon, um, we could get into so many others as well, including uh, Homo florensis, florensis, I should say, uh, which is that little hobbit-like one. And even now they acknowledge Homo capensis, which basically is coming out of the EGG bloodlines with the elongated heads. Mm -hmm. It's even in there now. So it's interesting because so many things go disappearing, but some things are actually becoming fat. Yes, they are. Underwater caves once hosted the America's oldest known ochre mines, and these now submerged Mexican caves over towards the Yucatan hold signs of red pigment extraction as early as 12,000 years ago, which was used for a lot of different things, including ceremonial events. Um, <clears throat> but when we, when we think about also, you know, people going down into those caves in Anatolia over in Turkey. There's a cave system there that could house hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people. Why? Because it, it's not all natural. You know, it's it's been augmented. And it's there's a lot of evidence that shows people were afraid of something. They were hiding from something or somebody. And, of course, we know there was a time when the quote-unquote gods which, you know, again, are not gods, were actually visible, visible to people. And, and again, everything gets way too jumbled. Um, we're doing a lot of work right now uh, with channeling with a archangel uh, that will, will be putting together a lot of info and, and coming out with a uh, series of vis videos to give more 
clarity because uh, it is so distorted, as we've said. You know, you have beings like the Ijiji and the Anunnaki uh, portraying themselves as gods. Uh, you have, you know, even beings that were basically humanoid, uh, just of those lineages, portraying themselves as God. And then you have beings that were referred to as gods that were what we would call Davic, uh, and really, uh, or you could even view them in some cases as angelic, and were really, you know, very, very benevolent beings. You have so many beings jumbled up together, and just like they do when we're looking at, you know, this grid work, they want you to look at it in one light and then either accept or throw out the whole ball of wax where it's not the case, you know. So again, the, the mad conspiracy theory, well, okay, maybe they are eliminating digits and that's why you got the grid pattern. But as we have said, the technology is there and the information we got is that this is a technological event that we're watching. It's the same thing too when we're, when we're looking at things along these lines. They want you to think, okay, well, if Inanna, you know, has bird-like feet and almost like either bird-like or reptilian legs, then she must be a Gigi or of a Gigi and Anunnaki blood. And then they'll want you to equate that with Enki and Enlil. And then all of a sudden we're trying to say you know well let's see now well zeus jupiter must be the same that means that Brias pati which is the vedic uh version the vedic deity of jupiter must be an anunnaki or a gigi and then isis must be no 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 they're all different distinct beings they're not all the same being this is where it's all jumbled up and almost impossible to extricate but this has been one of my things that I've been fascinated by is trying to figure out who is exactly what. And it's purposely confusing. Oh, definitely. And there's plenty of room in history for all these beings to have their own time, their own place, and their own thing, you know, as far as existence. So the earliest evidence of tobacco use dates to over 12,000 years ago and unclear how North American hunter-gatherers used the plant. And I love the way they refer to everybody that was living in a harmonious uh, way of life with the planet itself in such a light that they're putting them like they are inferior because they didn't utilize more modern systems. You know, there's a quote attributed to Yeshua uh, that says, you know, do you see the birds, right? Why are you so worried when the birds are not worried about where, you know, their meal, meals coming from tomorrow? Why are you so worried? These people that lived in harmony with the earth could sense the earth, could understand what the earth was telling them. They, they weren't worried about things that were worried about because they knew they were going to be taken care of. They would be guided to go to different areas where they could, you know, find plenty of bounty and an abundance uh, of things needed for life because they were so in tune. Look at how flocks of birds and schools of fish and herds of animal animals just know where to go mm -hmm. because their, their inner compass is aligned with the very planet itself. The oldest found human traces on the roof of the world. This is up in the Tibetan plateau and they think that a lot of this was uh, basically kind of like artwork from kids or kids having a good time you know some of these uh, footprints and handprints go all the way back to they say 169,000 to 226,000 uh, years old and uh, we've seen the use of hands as molds and cave paintings dating back to about 40,000 years ago in Indonesia and also in Spain and so researchers think that these prints that you're looking at there were made by kids between 7 and 12 years old. And again, how many times has our civilization 
been restarted and we start thinking about mud floods and things along those lines and many people want to not view the existence of extraterrestrial interdimensional overlords so they they look to say this is just all a natural cycle this is all just because of either you know the sun or different uh, elements going on within the earth in the atmosphere uh, cosmic forces you know all these things contribute but what we found is that the controllers take natural events and they amplify them this way there is a natural root cause that you could point to right but it's not the cause for the well the level of the destruction that we see because it's amplified it's like put on steroids and you know think about what we were taught in school so you know we just recently had columbus day hey columbus discovered the americas yeah you know tell that to the hundreds of millions that were already here well, you, you didn't even discover it from a European standpoint. The Vikings were here way before, you know. And so we see here new dating method shows Vikings occupied Newfoundland back in 10, 7, 1021 CE. So, again, they were here way before Columbus was. And when we look to Atlantis, you know, Atlantis was, boy, you want to talk about multicultural. I mean, it, it was a global civilization in which you also had extraterrestrials coming and going all the time interacting with people so why do we got ancient ruins in oklahoma did the vikings row long ships up up the arkansas river and uh havener oklahoma actually uh one of the places that i had semi-targeted and and still like as as a great little town area um that would be good for these times but yeah there's a lot of people that do believe the vikings were all the way over there how were they well it sure seems that there was something going on there that we're not being told too much about yeah and very much too i mean they've they've found um remains in florida bogs that defy the timeline that we were given Again, our history has been totally rewritten. The victors write the history. The victors want you to be deceived. They don't want you to understand the true history. So everything that you, we go and memorize and study and then regurgitate backwards to them, uh, to the teachers and everything out there, it's, it's all basically been distorted. And that's too bad, but we're, we're finding out. Again, the only way to go is within because you can connect to beings and to source that you know the beings are benevolent beings that you you could connect to everybody's when of a fundamentalist side uh, going to be terrified of connecting uh, to anything other than just praying in the manner of either you know our father who art in heaven or you know if you're islamic you know then into allah um, but we'll, we're going to go more into what we've discovered there. And we've talked about it in old videos as well. You know, again, the ones that are in control, they're okay with you utilizing names, sources, and methods that are the ones that they came up with in the first place. The ones that would be viewed as things you should stay away from it, again, this world is upside down, inside out, topsy turvy. Are are generally going to be uh, perhaps sources that can give you real knowledge and and real help. Meaning, you know, a lot of the ones that are quote unquote demonized. As when we look at you know the Book of Enoch, you could take it on many different levels, many different levels. And again, it's all been twisted and distorted. You know, the whole concept of fallen angels. When people say Oh, it's all fallen angels. They're not defining anything because for the most part, they can't even define what an angel is. They don't really even understand what an angel is. They haven't looked deep into it. They just are regurgitating what they've been told. And that's sad. You have to go in deeper and deeper and deeper and discover the bigger picture. And they definitely keep us busy and they keep us, you know, trying to 
scamper so that we don't have time to sit and go within. But really, that's something that everyone should be prioritizing because when you grow your energy body and you grow your spirit, you have more of an influence on this, on what's going on around you. Your surroundings become more coherent with your life and things just go smoother. And they don't teach us that at all. No, they don't. And we want to um, thank our our patrons. I know we have and, Mike. Yes, uh, we have we have Mike, who is a new patron, and then we're going to be uh, thanking the others as you guys come along. We've had so many people, uh, honestly, recently that have been uh, helping with Patreon, and it is a tremendous help because you know everything in this world is controlled by the controllers as far as their system. And unfortunately, this is all part of their system, but we utilize it. And uh, it was interesting, like Laurel said, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Yep. That was that was great. We loved it when she said that. Um, you, meaning, we're going to utilize their system to bring out the light and the truth and to help people come together. Because we have to get past all those things that separate us. All those things. But thank you guys for your support on Patreon and Ko-Fi and also Medicinal Foods as well. And thank you for your patience with us getting back um, to you. Anybody that needs to make an appointment, it's evolutionaryenergyarts at gmail.com or eearts at protonmail.com. And the website is uh, evolutionaryenergyarts.com. And that will um, tell you more about you know who we are. And what we do. So, again, thanks for your patience. Sometimes it takes us a few days to get back to all the emails and, and to get people scheduled. As always, be prepared out there. God bless and namaste. Namaste.